Welcome in to episode 014 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. My name is David Farmer uh, from Entice, and with me, as always, is David Bertoncini. How are you doing, sir? I am feeling so good and so strong today. I'm happy. It's exciting. It's the first week of October. It is. Man, we're just rolling into yep. the first couple days of the last quarter of 2019. So uh, hopefully this video will live evergreen, but you just looking at it as... It's a, it's a whole new beginning, man. I love October. It's just October. October, October is a, a beautiful time of year, rolling into really what's going to happen super fast. I think we talked about it a little bit last week at, or last episode uh, about uh, how quickly we kind of go through and um, where uh, uh, some stores might may even have Valentine stuff out. <laughs> on, uh, 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 but yeah, we got uh, we got uh, Halloween, we got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas rolling into the new year. So. Today, episode 014 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. Um, but before we get going, let's just see what we're doing for our coffee check. Man, we got, uh, I, I went with Kawa today and just uh, did the, the Kawa coffee. Just thought it was something good. The old um, standard the, Kawa coffee. The old coffee. standard nitro. I, I do nitro because, like I said, we're in Florida. It's freaking hot. Yeah. Doing hot coffee. Now that it's October, we can get a little spice in the lattes well, and stuff like that. I'll roll into that in mm -hmm. the next couple of weeks, but um, weather pertaining Florida winter is from like uh, January 1st to January 14th, maybe. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was about it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, uh, I did wear my, my, since we're talking digital today, I went old school digital and I wore my Pac-Man. Eight bit Pac-Man. <laughs> we got a little new addition. We got a sock cam going on today. Shot cam is on it, yep. so we got uh, so, Pinky and Blue from uh, Pac-Man and uh, my whole 80s uh, throwback uh, <laughs> digital sock. So, Phil, we went digital. We'll go all digital in, right? Yep, I love it. And you can see we've got a little uh, 80s uh, theme going on here. we got the Kool-Aid guy. we got uh, 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 Marty McFly and... Um, we got Doc Brown, and usually I think Marty and Doc are hiding a bit because they're really not able to catch them at the right angle. You're not getting it over here. You're not getting over here. So yeah, what but you're, you got what, the wide angle. Today. Yeah, exactly. So what you're not seeing uh, usually is uh, our buddy Mar Marty McFly and the time machine. Uh, so you're, we're getting a little bit different view here. Not only getting the sock cam, but we're getting the uh, the iPhone 11 uh, wide angle of MB <laughs> MDP Studios. Fancy pro edition you got yep. there, Mr. Farmer. It's very nice, very nice. <laughs> All right, so let's roll into what we're talking about today. So today we're talking about um, omni-channel retailing. So a recurring theme that we've had on the Modern Dealer podcast, one of my favorite things to talk about, is digital retailing. Now, for this, this episode, I wanted to um, highlight another used vehicle retailer, the biggest used vehicle retailer in the world, which is CarMax. And in, uh, started to do a little bit of research about CarMax. There's a couple articles in Automotive News, and they are referencing what they are doing in Omnichannel. And I think that's one of the big differentiators between CarMax and other retailers is they do happen to have over 200 physical locations and 25,000 employees. So what Carvana is able to do, for example, an online retailing. Uh, 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 CarMax is able to do that, but then they're also able to leverage uh, 200 physical locations and 25,000 employees. So it really changes the game from just a digital retailing aspect into more of an omni-channel. So I, I, I want to share with you what my thoughts of omni-channel retailing is and kind of the history of kind of the, the recent history of the terminology of omni-channel. So first of all, uh, omni-channel uh, retailing versus digital retailing. Uh, digital retailing, as we talked about uh, last episode, 013, and the evolution of dig digital retailing, we really talk about how people in automotive think about digital retailing today, which is that online shopping experience where customers are able to calculate their deal, payments, lease payments, maybe look at uh, incentives, taxes and fees, and start the process, and in some cases, start and complete the process, uh, really providing a full online purchase transaction. So there's a lot of 
companies in the marketplace right now that bring this type of DR technology to dealers. Um, and then we have more of the traditional process, you know, and what I love to think about the tr traditional process is selling cars in the 90s, <laughs> right? So um, that's something that we know a lot of. And you know what? I just want to take a step back. You know what's really interesting? So we started selling cars in the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in the car business really my entire life. Um, but thinking about selling cars in the 90s and then going back 20 years before that, selling cars in, in the, the 60s, 70s. 70s yeah. Now, just think about if, when we were selling cars in the 90s, thinking about what was it like selling cars in the 70s? And it, right. it, it, it would have been a completely different world. Right. So my, my, my thought is I wonder if we get some of the younger people in this industry right now and we talk about uh, selling cars in the 90s. Would it be, is, it, is it just the same as when we were selling the cars in the 90s, talking about selling cars in the 70s? It, it, totally. Well, obviously, so much changes in, in the world and yeah. everything. But, you know, selling cars in the 70s, there was – at least we had transition in the 90s yeah. into what we have now. In the 70s, there was no – there was no internet. There yeah. was no future of trying to <laughs> digitally retail. It was just yeah. like, hey, you know, the dealer held all the cards. The customer had no information, and they had to go from store to store to store trying to shop for a good deal. And they always had that family advisor or some friend that was an right. advisor yep. would be their guidance. That's their North Star for buying a car was, hey, well, my friend. Uh, you know, he knows how to buy a vehicle, so that was the, the guidance. Or dad, you know, yep. the, the third party. Third party. There, that yep. was the third party. Right. Was was yep. just maybe somebody a, fr a friend of the family was the third party, but completely different now as we look back to the '90s and thinking back to the '70s. I guess I did think about the '70s when we were selling cars. Yeah, you know, and, and really, I guess when we were thinking about selling cars in the '70s, what I think about is like used cars, the movie, yes. you know, with the plaid, <laughs> right? And they with run the, over the, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the, with the wing. Yep, chasing the dollar and <laughs> stuff like dollar, that. Right. So if you don't know what we're talking about there, we're talking about Used Cars, the movie with Kurt Russell. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, it's super funny. Um, you know, another uh, funny thing about that type of selling cars, that traditional style of what we consider a used car salespeople, is there was a, a, a big uh, advertising campaign, I think in the early 2000s, uh, the Badger yes. campaign. You remember that? The Badger, yes. Hilarious. What a great, what, what, what a, what a great series of commercials. And, and again, if you haven't seen that, we'll include a link in our, uh, our show notes to a couple YouTube videos there. Uh, super funny stuff. But again, kind of making fun of the, the car our business, right? Yeah. And really, so what we're talking about, we're really not too far off of what omni-channel really is. So that's kind of the traditional retailing of cars. Um, last week, talk, we talked about the evolution of uh, digital retailing, utilizing technology to uh, assist car buyers, uh, talking about the traditional sales process or what we think about the tr traditional, you know, non-technology assisted selling. And then somewhere in the middle is really what you want to think about omni-channel retailing. And this really, I think, is a better way to characterize how customers want to buy cars. Uh, a, couple a couple episodes ago, we had uh, Sam Robbie from Brandon Honda, Honda uh, uh, visit with us here at the Modern Dealer Podcast. And we spent a lot of time about more of a hybrid approach. So I think instead of calling it a hybrid approach, what we really need to talk about is an omni-channel. So a traditional channel, a, um, a digital channel, and how that kind of all works together as an omni-channel way of retailing. So that's kind of my definition of what omni-channel is versus uh, the tra traditional retailing and digital retailing. And it actually reminds me of... Um, Back in 2004, uh, I think 2016, um, I, I had the opportunity to speak at Digital Dealer. And one of the things that I included in my presentation was a study that was released a couple years prior to that, which was in 2014, uh, an omni-channel uh, study by Google. And 
they really researched how customers are using digital uh, in their purchase experience, whether it's for automobiles or whether it's for any other type of product. And one of the things that really stuck out to me and resonated with me uh, over the last few years is how people are utilizing smartphones or uh, you know in the sales process. And it is, this is back in 2014, so this is five years ago. So mm -hmm. you know that these numbers uh, have increased substantially. They practically doubled. Yeah, I, I would say. Um, but w what was interesting then is that 42% of in-store consumers are conducting research online while in the store. So they're utilizing their mobile device as personal digital assistance, as ways to get information. So when customers are purchasing vehicles today, I don't think we have to educate anybody in <laughs> as a modern dealer that customers are engaging with their mobile device doing research and validating what's happening on the showroom floor uh, to make sure that they're getting the proper information. They're trusting, but also verifying. Trust with, yeah, trust, trust with verify. Trust with verify, right? But they're they're sitting there in the showroom. The, if the salesperson is telling them something that they're, well, wait a minute, they'll, they'll double check the salesperson, mm -hmm. whatever's coming out of the salesperson's mouth, if they feel that, I don't remember seeing that. Um, or if the salesperson can't answer a question, it's simply if you have a new salesperson, they're going to find out themselves. Yeah. Um, by just checking right there while they're doing their transaction in the showroom. So it could be as simple as, "Hey, do you have a white one of those?" I mean, what do we have to do back in the '90s? Run outside, right? <laughs> exactly, right? Or, or like maybe run to the desk if, yeah. if they had, uh, you know, knowledge of a white one. But usually, yeah. just run outside, run outside, see what's there, what's or, or go to the desk. You know, leave the customer, go to the desk, find out, go talk to the inventory manager, go talk to Dale, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Old Dale. laughs> um, but uh, find out: Do we have one in stock? Do we have one coming? Where is it at? Uh, but I mean, a customer, they, they don't even have to ask the question anymore. All they yep. have to do is look down, white. Yep. It shows that you have a white one. I think I'd be interested in looking at that, right? right? So the idea of customers today that are engaging with digital activities in the dealership showroom is changing the way that customers are buying cars, creating this omni-channel type of retail experience. You know, back when we were selling cars prior to the uh, the advent of the internet, if somebody said, what do you think a payment would be on that? I don't even know if customers are even asking that question anymore, because if they look at a $20,000 car, they can go right to Google and go, payment you know, calculator, payment calculator, boom, it comes up, right? Exactly what they're, yeah. Figure it out themselves. Yeah. What's, what, you know, what's the best interest rate I can get? Yeah. Google the best interest rate. Right? I mean, yeah, it's I mean, simple. It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, not difficult. And actually, one of the things that we were going to talk about today, and kind of why I built uh, the the research that I put together for this episode, is we were going to have a finance director from a large volume import store uh, available to be a guest. Uh, but it is the second of the month, and we know that that is a very difficult time in uh, in, in automotive retail. And if you're watching. You know, as we release this, we appreciate you getting getting right on us and, and watching it. We know that uh, that um, uh, dealership employees get super busy uh, the beginning of the month. But the reason I'm bringing that up is that the game has changed. The way that customers are getting information, the way the information that customers have access to, really changes the way that a customer uh, will purchase vehicle. Not only what they're doing at home mm -hmm. or at the comfort of wherever they have internet access, but actually in the dealership showroom. They're doing the research at the same point they're doing their, their, their purchase. purchase, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, having the ability to sit there in the showroom and as you said, calculate their own payment, check the inventory, um, verify what the salesperson is telling them. They have it right there at their fingertips, yeah. which like you, like we said in the beginning of this episode, if we could go back to the 90s and and that just wasn't available, thinking of the management that we had worked in the 70s yeah, on the floor. Exactly, and right? the customer had all those questions. You didn't have to, there was no CSI. Just there get them no, in. Just get, yeah, and it was just, it was a whole different mindset yeah. now. Yeah. It's like when we get into further into the episode, yeah. um, it, it's it's all about the customer service and additionally, you know, morphing there's your sales process as you said, be a process expert, not so exactly, much a product yes. expert, yep. but a process expert into 
the, per- the, the new way to purchase a vehicle. So one of the things uh, that happened this week is I was sent a, a YouTube video by um, by a good friend of mine. Um, Me? No, it, was, oh. it wasn't you. <laughs> I sent you one this week. Yeah, I sent yeah. you one yesterday. Yes, yes, you did, yeah. I, I did watch it. Yeah, Good. Gary V. absolutely, talking yeah. about the history or the uh, the future of uh, automotive. And we'll, we'll include that link in here as well. It's uh, very interesting, the idea. And it's exactly what we're talking about now. It's an omni-channel experience. So we'll just discuss that real quick, and we'll come back to my other topic. But uh, the, So the video that you sent was uh, Gary's, uh, uh, a video with Gary Vaynerchuk, Round tabling, round tabling some ideas, one of them being the 4Ds. Somebody, I, and I'm assuming, I didn't watch the whole thing. I only watched from 53 minutes yeah, in. Yeah, 53 you, minutes. So. But somebody that was there was in, wanted to be in the automotive space, right? Right. He basically wants to bring a Carvana experience, but he was trying to basically buy cars, you know, all online and then wholesale them to the dealership was his thought oh, process. Okay. Not a full... Uh, you know, soup to nuts retail transaction, but he wanted to to start that uh, that thing. But what Gary's response was, he's saying that, you know, tier three dealership uh, marketing, you know, the dealership model, he says, it's not going to happen now, but in the next maybe 10 to 15 years, yep. that dealership model is going to be broken down, like we talked about with, with Sam, the interruption yep. of the process, and more car, ma- or excuse me, more Carvanas, um, you know what was the the other one uh, the other digital we talked about Vroom Vroom yeah about, more yeah. Vroom and more yeah. Carvanas are yeah. going to come through and they're going to set up shop and that's going to really be that omni channel that customers are going to take because yeah. they want to just sit back on the couch and buy on their terms their way like Toyota's whole idea with Scion was to do it the millennials way was the whole premise of yeah. Scion and I think that comes uh, as a good topic for this omni-channel experience. Another thing Gary V says in relation to op, uh, automotive, at least his interpretation of what's going to happen in automotive, is that nothing is going to change dramatically over the next 10, 15, maybe 30 years. We're still going to have franchises. We have franchise laws that are protecting the dealers. Customers still want to touch the car, drive the car, ask questions. So there's no, if there. So his point was, if there was going to be major disruption in the next five to 10 years, we would see more of an impact right now. But where the things are going to be changing for dealerships, in my opinion, is it's going to be embracing what customers can do in an omni-channel experience and I like the, I the like the way that you said it is that um, uh, customers can do it on their time and on their terms and that is they want to have the ability to do all the research that they want but they want to also have the ability to move forward into the purchase transaction by touching by asking questions and having somebody educate them about you know the using of the vehicle and understanding mm-hmm. all the features uh, just like you go into the Apple store you mentioned when you purchased your MacBook you want you wanted to have somebody there to be able to answer some questions for you and that, that's how you felt more com- most comfortable buying uh, you know buying that machine same thing with the new vehicles there's a lot of uh, pieces that require some face to face but with that we're 18 minutes and 56 seconds into uh, <laughs> episode zero one for the Modern Europe podcast. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back in to the second segment of episode 014 of the Modern New York Podcast. We're going to jump right back into the point I was trying to make earlier. But actually, let's go ahead and skip that. Uh, so one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to bring up uh, another movie that we, <laughs> that we were talking about with Suckers, right? So that's another one that you might want to check out if you want to uh, see what it was like selling cars in the 90s. I used to use Suckers as part of my sales meeting. It's like, let's make sure we don't do <laughs> this today. Yeah. Uh, I would play just a little like thirty second clip from the from the movie and just use it to tell the salespeople like yeah look, let's not be that guy yeah. today okay and you want <laughs> you want you want some other additional '90s car humor uh, you know one one of the things that I really enjoyed about seeing Grant Cardone live is that he is a funny motherfucker there's no question about it and I mean he had just a whole bunch of crazy ways to 
take comedy and turn it into sales education. So if you can look up some uh, old uh, some some old '90s Cardone videos, I know they're out there. I think you'd uh, really enjoy that as well. Remember the whole thing you used to take with his uh, his microphone? He'd talk right into the microphone and say, "That's your shadow." That's that's telling you bad shit, <laughs> right? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That yeah, that was funny. He he, uh, he definitely would put a, a a good humor into yeah into the whole thing of just being a salesperson at a car dealership because yep. he spent you know he was in a business four years I think it was he spent something like four that. years yeah. at a Honda store in Lake yeah. Charles, Louisiana. Yeah, that was the extent of the car business, yeah. and then he he said I'm going to become a vendor for the yeah. car business and successful with that for yeah. a good 15, tw- almost yeah. 20 year run, and then he. Became omni-channel now yeah. with being a uh, yeah. the 10x movement and just man oh man, it's man he's, he's a superstar hanging yeah. out with uh, you know big time big, yeah. the big boys. But maybe one day we can get him on the Modern Dealer podcast. Well, he kind of owes us a favor, doesn't? Yeah, he? maybe a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> your video. Roll it back into. You. So somebody sent me a video of a guy. Um, it, it was a uh, recording of uh, a video recording of a guy explaining how he sells a hundred cars per month. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I mean, literally, uh, a, Honda, a Honda salesperson up in I think New Jersey ish area. Have did you he have an? Ass- did he had an assistant? Are we just talking about or no? He, well, he did have assistant, but he sold each one of the cars face to face himself. So wow. it's not he he wasn't. I mean, he was acting as a salesperson. I'll yeah. share the video with you as well. Awesome. Um, pretty Three. incredible. Three a day, 30 days. Yeah. That's 99 I mean, cars you can right do there. It. I mean, yeah. I, I've had five car days before. Yeah. I'm sure you've had five, yeah. seven car days before. And you're like the old uh, $5 car sale uh, days. But uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, literally, you know, five cars in a day, that's doable. Yeah. I mean, as long as you have your appointments lined up. Tr- you know, hat tricks. I don't know how many times I've, I've had, you yep, know, three, three car days. You know, several of those, so many, many of those. Uh, so it's 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 doable. It's just making sure that you have, you know, the right, the, the, the the right amount of people um, uh, pulled in. I'm not even sure why I was going to bring up uh, the, um, the, uh, the uh, that video, guy? but um, well, you probably had a omni-channel. Um, you know, his process in order to deliver 100 cars a month. You know, clearly you have yeah. to have some sort of structure. You're not going to eat. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons, actually, I did. Now that you say that, is you brought up our idea of transitioning people away from being product specialists into being process specialists, um, and uh, that's one of the things that he said that he did is that he really uh, utilized the process of buying vehicles to uh, share that with consumers and educate them, and you know, being confident in yourself being confident in your pricing and being able to explain how to buy a vehicle and get people to trust you based on your education and, and the process of buying a car. So we're kind of getting way off the, uh, the rails. We're going <laughs> to wrap it back in and we're going to move it into um, some of the ideas of, uh, of omni-channel uh, uh, and digital retailing. I think um, I put a slide together of really kind of the key areas of things that you could have on your website and that should be transparent transitioning into your dealership showroom that really kind of encapsulate the idea of omni-channel uh, uh, retailing or digital retailing. I mean, it really boils down to just a handful of different things, yeah. and that is getting price and payment and everything that goes into getting in a price and payment, trade appraisals, F&I product review, credit application, an in-store express delivery, and or a at-home or at-work express test drive delivery. And one of the things um, that uh, I did want to dig into is CarMax. Um, So one of the uh, CarMax is really embracing um, this idea of omni-channel retailing. Um, So just a quick background on CarMax, kind of CarMax by the numbers. So uh, first of all, CarMax is the United States largest used car retailer and a Fortune 500 company. The company uh, entity behind the formation of CarMax was Circuit City. The first CarMax used car superstore opened in September 1993, 1. 1.7 miles away from Circuit City's corporate offices in Richmond, Virginia. And one of the things that I, that I did find when I was doing a little bit of research on CarMax is the reason that they started into uh, automotive retail is that they were looking at ways to expand Circuit City. Mm-hmm. And they, Circuit City had a very, a very high saturation of retail locations. They could 
couldn't grow by adding more physical locations, mm -hmm. so they had to grow by choosing different products to sell. And that's where they, they thought that there was an opportunity in uh, CarMax. That's an oversimplification of it, but that was kind of the spark of the idea is you want to grow your business, you need to grow it outside of consumer electronics. Right. Well, it's a good thing they had a plan B because plan, B, plan A <laughs> didn't work out so well. Yeah, and yeah. Well, the demise of Circuit City was really customer service. If you talk to anybody that was in electronic retail, they would tell you that like Best Buy gave you a better customer experience yep. than Circuit City. Now, I think the CEO had probably taken that lesson. And when we talk about you know how that customer was saying, "Hey, I want to. I, I can't come to the dealership. A competitor gave me, uh, you know, pricing on a vehicle. You guys have a similar vehicle sitting on your lot there yep. at CarMax. How can I get it? Yeah. And that's how we get into this omni-channel retailing yep. that you know CarMax is kind of. Do they put their stamp on it? Is that like their terminology? Uh, did did CarMax come up with this? Uh, have they branded it as like you know omni-channel no, retail? No, no, no. no. Okay. So, so, so the terminology omni-channel has been around a while. The first that I was really um, uh, uh, I, where I think it's been part of the nomenclature of digital advertising is you know five or six years ago when when Google came out with that omni-channel study. Uh, but it is definitely something that has been ha that has been around. Uh, but it is something that CarMax is embracing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what's very interesting is you think about it is the reason that. Uh, Circuit City did not succeed, and why they're not around today is they did not embrace the omni-channel type of uh, a pr uh, a process. Yeah. Um, we did a article. We we did one of our early podcasts around um, the Google Think Auto event, and the digitization of the sales process was a big part of that uh, episode. And we talked about uh, why Best Buy has been was successful and is continues to be successful, and why Circuit City. Uh, did not, and basically it boils down to is that they did not embrace an omni-channel way of retailing product where uh, Best Buy did. Best Buy did. Yeah. Uh, so some of the other numbers that's important to understand is uh, uh, currently CarMax has 216 locations. 14 more are expected by May 2020. Wow. Uh, 751,512 used car re, uh, retailed in 2018. So they're nearly scraping a million. So that's the three quarters of a million right there. Three quarters of a million cars retailed per per year. And I think they're on track. I think they're a six percent increase in over the uh, uh, quarter quarter to quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, they did have also had an increase in a PVR uh, quarter one for 2019 over uh, previous quarter uh, at 2183. Very right. respectable. Carvana, we know, is like $3,510. They're killing it. Yeah. Uh, and they're doing it in a way that uh, Car uh, CarMax has successful, very successfully done, and that is to purchase vehicles from consumers. 50% of, the, uh, of the, their inventory are from car purchases, uh, from, from private purchases, I should say. Uh, 50,000 used vehicles in stock. Uh, I think, um, you know, you look at other large volume uh, online retailers like Carvano, I know we mm -hmm. reference them a lot. I think they have 15 to 18,000 uh, vehicles uh, at two in 216 locations and 50,000 vehicles. They get a ton. Mm -hmm. Revenue of $17.1 billion. Uh, currently, they're at, at near an all-time high uh, stock value at $85.75. And, and, and if you look at the um, if if you look at the graph from you know '97 when they went public, uh, I mean it's it, it's it's 45 degree angle. I mean it's right. pretty amazing. Even though all the craziness you, that we've had. Yeah, you feel I feel that's like underpriced at $85. Yeah. I mean look yeah. at the, the the stock value of Facebook today on all the Facebook right, yeah. global, but yeah. this is the number one used car retailer in the United States. You think they would have a, a little higher stock value? Yeah, especially when you consider assets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, look at they're adding fourteen more stores, yeah. and then the next what's that? Eight months away from now? Yep, that's a lot. Of, that's yeah, a lot exactly. Of, a lot of uh, stakes in the ground. Yeah. Um, one thing that that stood out about uh, CarMax to me was going back to as a consumer. If you're thinking about it as a consumer. If you're a, a dealership and you have multi points, and let's just say you're a dealer group of 20 stores, and you have a customer looking at a used car, and your website actually covers all 20 of your points, 
making it easy for that vehicle, if it was you know 200 miles away at one of your sister stores, to be able to transfer that car. Right. CarMax got that out to the consumer early and made it easy for the consumer to say, hey, I like this car in your inventory, but it is 200 miles north mm-hmm. of you at another look. It's in Jacksonville, Florida, and we're down in Tampa, Florida. It's two, over 200 miles away. So they made it easy for the consumer to, to do an omni-channel purchase of that vehicle in Jacksonville, pick it up at their local CarMax location. So they made it easy for the consumer that way, and that's you know part of the whole process. And now they're giving the customer the opportunity to have the vehicle delivered to their home or their work. So they're expanding into the omni-channel retailing. So there's an article, September 30th, 2019, from Automotive News, The CarMax Approach. And they're really looking at this as a way to personalize the car buying experience. So Automotive News, there's a great article. Um, A couple of the points I want to pull out of that article that um, that interested me. Number one, omni-channel has become a well-worn word, not just in automotive retail, but in retail in general. As people increasingly shop from the comfort of wherever they have an internet connection, and companies such as Amazon make uh, web shopping and quick home delivery the norm. So CarMax Omnichannel stu- uh, a strategy boils down to personalizing the customer's car buying journey, whether that person is at a physical store, online, or chatting by phone with a company representative. So the way that they're uh, attacking this is they're actually building uh, what they're calling customer experience centers. Um, these customer experience centers are going to employ 300 people. Um, I think they have two right now another one that is going to be um, uh, opening soon. These are the people that are going to be uh, facilitating the purchase. So we've talked about this with Carvana in the past where Mm -hmm. they say it's 100% online, 0% salesperson. We know the reality is that there's a person on the other end of the chat, of the phone, of however you're communicating email, right? Mm -hmm. There's a person, whether that's a salesperson or a customer experience uh, concierge, Uh, it is a salesperson that's facilitating the transaction. So so the way that um, CarMax is creating this uh, this evolution is to really embrace the omni-channel type of retailing where a customer from the comfort of their own home, the comfort of their own office, they're engaging with car buying uh, exploration activities online. They can engage with somebody right there. They can facilitate the entire transaction. And one of the things that they talk about is kind of u- using this kind of as a prototypical experience of a uh, of a female car purchaser um, that they reference in this article. Mm-hmm. And she had just um, she had a newborn and was not able to take her, you know, into a newborn to a car dealership to try to purchase a vehicle. So they brought the vehicle out to her and that was a, uh, a good move. And that was kind of the, uh, the catalyst for this whole, uh, you know, omnipres- omni-channel approach, omnipresent, that's, that's Grant Cardone's uh, slogan yeah. right there, but uh, omni-channel approach to, to car buying. Um, you know, and this just came out, you know, just a few days ago, um, this CarMax approach, but Realistically, it does mirror a lo- it does model quite a bit the, the the Carvana experience. Yeah. So well, this so this article just came out. They actually launched this as a beta back uh, last year. Um, there's oh, actually an- another uh, there's another article June twenty fourth, twenty nineteen. Yeah, so a few months ago, um, where, where they continue to talk about the rollout of the omni-channel uh, capability, uh, mm-hmm. offering a seamless car buying experience to consumers who shop online, in-store, or both, mm-hmm. which really is the idea of omni-channel, shopping online, in-store, or both. Um As the CEO of CarMax said, this is the future of car buying. It's important that we provide customers with the ability to shop on their terms anywhere, anytime. So those are some of the key pieces uh, that I thought was uh, very important about the idea of providing an omni-channel retail experience. Now, there's more information that we can get into. 
We're 15 minutes into our second segment of uh, the Modern Dealer podcast. So what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of wrapping this up, David. And the way that I want to wrap this up is um, I, I like the idea of what we do in the podcast here. And that is we take a topic, we kind of do a mini deep dive. We try to find some articles that reference some good information that we can research. Some of this is going to be brand new to us. Uh, it kind of expands our uh, our knowledge. We hope that we're kind of providing some uh, some ways to um, to spark some innovation at your dealership, and that's kind of the goal of what we're doing with the with the Modern Dealer Podcast. So, what we can learn from this idea of the omni-channel retailing, what can you know? The question is, what can we learn from the largest retailer of used vehicles? Is that omni-channel is important? That this is the future of car buying, and there's some specific things that you can do. Um, and, and one of the things that you can do is to really embrace uh, omni-channel uh, retailing. So one of the things that we do from a company standpoint, from a vendor standpoint, is we supply our dealers kind of a digital retailing in a box. Now, when a dealership uh, you know, starts down the road of digital retailing, I think it's important to understand that this is an evolution of car buying, that it is not a new way to sell cars. It is a way to expand and create new ways to communicate uh, the way you sell cars with customers. So it's this omni-channel approach. I think that supplying digital retailing activities that are designed to kind of 100% purchase your vehicle online is not... Uh, going to appeal to most of the buyers. Um, but uh, where I'm kind of going with this is that embracing omni-channel means that you do have to create new ways for customers to engage with car buying experiences online and being able to communicate that. So we do that with what we call Shopper Express, uh, where car buying should be easy. And we supply a unique selling proposition to a dealership um, with use of videos, with the use of um, in-store point of purchase, and integrating this process into the existing dealership model. Um, so this is a way for dealerships to really start on the path of um, uh, uh, you know, expanding their retail model into, um, into the omni-channel type of selling cars. And, and, and actually, if I open up uh, one of these pages, for example, um, uh, we, you know, we look at six simple steps to buy your next vehicle online. Of course, you're able to take your pick, you know, get your best pricing up front, being able to calculate your payments. And I do want to just take a step back. It's like you don't have to use our technology to do this. I think the technology can be utilized from any of the providers, but it's how you're positioning it. How are you educating the consumers? So, uh, but these are the elements that you need to think about. How are you going to price your vehicles? Are you going to give your customers the ability to calculate a payment, lease payment, taxes and fees, incentives, right? Purchase transparency. Purchase transparency. How are you going to how are you going how are you going to create the transparency into your process um, and tools should help you do that personalize the trade value uh, being able to get trade values uh, instantly uh, being able to research and select protection plans um, we know that they bring value to consumers right yeah be able to explore an f and i product which you know if we had had our guest on today we would have got a little bit deeper yeah. into an f and i product but i just want to lightly touch on it real fast yep. and if a customer could get more information up front about f and i products they would see more value in it versus trying to slam people into an f and i product and then you know two days later you're you know they're back in the f and i office trying to unwind yeah. out of that product and you're sitting there scrambling your f and i managers trying to you know shoestring the deal back together with the product in there and asking to cut the front and yep. put more in the trade so you can keep his product in there. But if we gave him information about the product ahead of time on your website or, you know, how are we, you can deliver it to the customer, they would be more educated about it. And I say, you know what, that tire wheel does make sense because I just, you know, there's construction down the street from my house. It took me two days to process that yeah. it does make sense. So 
we start thinking about omni-channel, omni-channel means that it's happening in your showroom, at the customer's house, in store, online, anywhere a customer has an internet connection. So giving these tools on your website also provides insight in, to that customer that's in your dealership showroom looking at that white Corolla and so you know, while I'm waiting for them to get that cleaned up, I can do additional research on your website and learn more, justify on my time before I start talking to a finance manager. Yep. So it enhances the process, right? Yep. It's not just- Speeds it up, enhances it. Does, yep. does key replacement make sense for me as a customer to buy? Well, Mr. Customer, these are not keys you can get cut at Home Depot. These are $500 you know, processors. Yep. I mean, these are like a, a mini computer that w that you're using to start your, your smart, uh, your smart uh, start on your vehicle. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, oh, well, I didn't think of it that way. Maybe the key replacement would be a good idea yeah. if they had that information before going into right. finance. And, and, like, yeah. and, and we know that the quality of F&I products is there, that they really bring value to consumers. Being able to create that, uh, you know, uh, create the value proposition, you should be doing that on your dealership website. You should be mm -hmm. doing that in an omni-channel way. It doesn't have to be step-by-step. -step. I purchased a vehicle, I find out what my payment is, and mm -hmm. then I move into the finance department. I mean, if you, and, the, and I'll kind of start to, to, wrap up, uh, to wrap up now, but if you really start to do your research on YouTube, for example, because we know that's, uh, that's where people are going to get a question answered, you know, go to YouTube right now after after this episode <laughs> and type in car buying tips, how to buy a used car. Just type in the word CarMax and right. you'll see all these experts out there showing you uh, how to buy a car. And the biggest one of the biggest things that they're talking about is how car dealers are ripping you off and how right. they can rip you off. I mean, those are the videos that are they're coming up. So um, if that's the perception out there is that car dealers are looking to rip you off, we need to change that perception mm -hmm. by opening up transparency. We can do that by utilizing digital retailing activities and embracing omni-channel retailing, right? Absolutely. So with that, <laughs> let me give you my my uh, my three takeaways yes. from from the the episode zero one four. For I'm going to go back a few episodes to what I identified as the three P's. It's your people, your product, and your process. This here, putting all those in alignment with your customer. That hey. I want to purchase this vehicle from this dealership. I like their people and their process yeah. and, of course, their product. Um, aligning that up in a omni-channel uh, you know, way to purchase the vehicle being, you know, hey, I can start my process online. I like this, this, you know, this product. I like the store. I can finish it up at the dealership, just like when I referred to buying this, uh, this MacBook that I felt, you know, hey, I'm going to buy it online, but I'm taking delivery in the store because I need – that guidance just like somebody would need some extra guidance purchasing a, a 2020 vehicle that's got some technologies they're not familiar with yep so just a, a little bit of help with that but that's my takeaway on that there that's my story and i'm sticking to it all right and i'll wrap things up by saying that you know uh, omni channel really embracing the best things about uh, the physical in-store experience, embracing the best parts of uh, creating the transparency through tools that you can have on your dealership website, um, and not and not changing the way that you uh, that that you know the way that you're interacting with customers, but looking to enhance it by using uh, tools. And I think mm -hmm. that's really the, uh, the you know the biggest takeaway is is how can you enhance uh, uh, your experience by embracing uh, omni-channel retailing. I got one omni presence to plug in. Is be sure to make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. That uh, also we're in iTunes, the uh, Modern Dealer Podcast. Do check out our Facebook group. Be a part of the group. Stay in the conversation. Let the episode continue in our conversations that we have back and forth. And make sure you turn on notifications. And in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I gotta say about that. With that, subscribe. Hit notifications. Ding. <laughs> Always got to get include the ding. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, episode 014 is in the books. <laughs>